Genesis 18, verse number 10, the Bible reads, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. This is when, when God is promising that he's going to have a son and that Sarah's going to have a son. And this is the child of promise. And this is, this is when he's receiving this information right before God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a whole other sermon. Verse number 10 here, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So they're really old. Sarah's already, you know, beyond her childbearing age. And she kind of doubts. So she laughs like, <laughs> what, I'm really going to have a child now? Verse number 20, 12 says, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. She's saying, how is this going to happen? I, you know, we're both really old. How am I going to have kids? But what I want to, you know, that's what she's thinking. That's what she's saying. But in her heart, in her mind, notice she said, my Lord being old also. She's referring to her husband as being her Lord, my Lord, my boss. This isn't an outward thing to sound spiritual in front of other people. This is no one else is, is no one would even know about this if it weren't written in the scripture. Because God knew her thoughts. God knew the thoughts of her heart. This was in her heart. And you know what? This very event, this statement that she made, my Lord being old also, is, is um, referred to in 1 Peter chapter 3. You don't have to turn there. Stay in Genesis 18. 1 Peter 3 verse 5 says, For after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. And, and I'll tell you this much, you know, not to take anything away from Sarah, because she's being referred to as a very godly, holy woman here in the scripture, to be able to have that obedience and even calling him Lord. But I don't think she was left alone. In that, in that state of being submissive, I think she, it was easy for her to, to do that because Abraham was such a good leader, because he was a good husband at home, because he loved his wife, he cared for his wife, and it made it a lot easier for her, and her being godly made it easier for him to love her, right? It works both ways. But when you have a great marriage and a great relationship and you follow things the way that God has laid out to do it, you're going to be blessed and, and you'll find yourself, I mean, this is some great recognition here. Sarah had in her heart calling him Lord. And I think this just demonstrates even further to Abraham's ability to be a great leader, both in the home as well as on the job. But look at verse number 17 in Genesis 18. Because this is, this is the best compliment you can ever receive, because this is coming from the Lord. Uh, regarding Abraham. Verse 17 says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? And he's talking about destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 18, Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Look at verse 19. For I know him. I know him. I know Abraham. I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. God, he's, I know Abraham. Abraham's got the character. Abraham's got the, I know him. He's going to raise his family right. He's going to raise his children. He's going to guide his household. And they're going to follow the ways of the Lord. What a great example of a man of God, of someone who's following the word of God. This is what we need to be striving for. Would to God that you could be a father that God knows and says, you know what, I know, I know this person. I know that they're going to raise their children right. 